Good afternoon. Well, actually, it's good evening and good morning. <laughs> Welcome to another Costa Women Hangout uh, with me, Fiona Cashpole. And I am, as as has been known recently, to be in Malaga, uh, Cosmo Stathion broadcasting uh, to you recently. Next week, I will be in the UK. Um, but my special guest today is uh, Caroline Angus Baker, and she is all the way over in New Zealand. Um, it's 9.20 Spanish time in the evening, but it's 9.20 New Zealand time, isn't that right? Hi, Caroline. Oh, I can't hear you. Could you just try your speakers again for me? Your sound has disappeared. Did you accidentally mute yourself? No, no, it should be Oh, okay. Sorry about that. We've, we've got the sound back. We've got the sound back. So, as I just said, <laughs> uh, it's uh, morning where you are. And, um, yes, and uh, you're just about to start your day. And it looks like possibly it's going to be a beautiful day over there for you. Yes, it's late summer here, so we're eking out every last minute of sunshine that we can get. Now, the fact that you're over in New Zealand, people might be saying, well, what's the connection uh, between you and Costa Women over here in Spain? Uh, tell us a little bit about your your life that you, or the time that you've spent here in Spain and, and how we have this connection with you. I was first approached to move to Spain in 2004. Uh, my husband is a professional athlete and the America's Cup was to be held in Valencia in 2007. We got this whirlwind opportunity to move to Valencia and I had never heard of the place before. But because my great-grandfather was part Spanish, I learned the language. I had always wanted to go to Spain, so we grabbed the opportunity and we moved to Valencia in 2005. And I just fell in love and I've just written about it ever since because it's, it's the best inspiration I can find. I, I have um, had a great look on your website uh, about you. You have been writing. How how long have you been writing about Spain now? Sorry, I slightly lost the year oh, in my headphones. Then that you first arrived in Valencia. I moved to Valencia in two thousand five with the intention of writing, but because there's so much to do, I didn't write a word. And it wasn't until I moved home in two thousand and nine that I sat down and I could write a book about Spain. And from, from then on, you're, you have been pr writing prolifically about Spain and there's a, a, you're, you describe yourself as a Duende loving Kiwi writer focusing on modern and historical Spain and uh, you, you've written a lot about Spain via your books, the Cana Medici series and the Secrets of Spain trilogy. So tell us a little bit about those books and what we could expect to... to um, discover about you and your books if we were to pick them up right now. If you were to read Secrets of Spain, she's like my baby. It's about everything I've learned about Valencia and its history, all brought together but with fictional characters so you can feel the human side of what's gone on in Valencia over the past sort of 100 years. I've done a lot of study on the Spanish Civil War and that's where it originally started but it's actually a cross-generational story about people living through Franco and uh, what their life is like today with the financial crisis and how it all sort of blends together. Whereas my Canna Medici series is completely different. People always tell me it's very dark and you've really got to want sort of a scary story to read it. Uh, the main character, he is Spanish and he moves around Europe as an opera singer and he meets this woman, Canna, who is Italian and they just go through all these crazy things, but any time they come back to Spain, it's when everything sort of smooths out again, through all the good things happen, and then there's all this dramatic, over-the-top sort of, sort of story that you can enjoy with Canna. I haven't had a chance to read the books. I only um, got the message the other day from, from Ali, Ali Meehan from Costa Women, um, that I was going to get the chance to speak to you. So I had a quick look on your website, and the 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 reviews on Canna Medici and the way it's described ha almost seems to have a, a Shakespearean quality to it. Is that, you know, how? what other sort of writers have you been influenced by and how would you compare it if somebody was to say, um, what's it like? What I get most is they think of a Lord Byron type character, a Byronic hero that is dark but inherently good but they can't quite get themselves organised. Yeah, it is dark. It is yeah, Shakespearean. It's 
big dramatic story. I just let it go and all these crazy things happen. But people love it. They love the escape from reality. They love the craziness about Hannah. And I just love to write her. Yeah, that's. Uh, I can see your enthusiasm straight, straight away when you're talking about it. And now the other one that you mentioned, the Secrets of Spain trilogy. How difficult or easy was that to research with regards to the the aspects are involving Franco, for example? Because my children went to school here, and uh, it was hardly talked about. It, it was mentioned once in one of their textbooks. Yeah, I when I moved to Spain, I had no idea that even been a civil war. I didn't know anything about Franco, and when I lived there, you also didn't hear about it. It wasn't until a friend of mine introduced me to a woman who. You know, she was quite old, and she knew a lot about Franco and the life, and she was happy to talk about it. And until she spoke to me, I had no idea what was going on. And she explained to me her husband had been killed. There was a a grave that he was hidden in out in the country. I had no idea this had gone on. And ever since, I've just tried to get my hands on anything I can. But it's thousands of hours. A lot of people don't want to talk about it, but then you'll find one who just opens it up. And it was actually a New Zealand nurse in the Spanish Civil War that led me to the first book. She died after she came home from the war, but her nephew was the mayor here. And he spoke to me and gave me her diaries, all the information she had, and I was able to put together this terrific story. And she's, she's a real hero, and that's why I wanted to make a book out of her. That's incredible that you, you came all the way over here, but you got the real story back over in New Zealand. Yes, I had the location in mind, but it was actually the main character actually came from New Zealand. And in your world as a writer, I I I noticed that you say that you're writing all the time practically. Are you just um, absorbing stuff from around you on a daily basis? And what sort of advice would you give to a, a potential writer based on on your experience? Is there a way of switching your brain off, for example, to not write, or how does it work? I can't stop writing. I, I'll lie in bed at night and I'll, it's like a character is standing next to the bed and just talk and talk and talk and I, I don't get any peace. Usually if I vacuum the floor, I'll get a whole chapter in mind. It never, never goes away. But I think if you are starting out, just write anything you want because the first draft you write will never be any good. You'll always have to critique it over and over and over. Don't worry about the big fancy words and the descriptions. Just put anything you want and then later on you can develop it into what will be beautiful in the end. But just write anything, anything you like. Mm -hmm. I, I had a go at writing. I do a little bit of blogging. I have to say my first um, go at writing was very boring. <laughs> I, but it was it was non-fictional. It was based on my own experiences of buying a property over here. So it had the snappy title of um, how to do your own snag report on a new build property in Spain. So it wasn't really going to be a bestseller. <laughs> yeah. now, so the the other aspect that I, I had um, with regards to writing um, is the the potential for yes praise but also criticism how do you how do you deal with that on a daily basis on a daily basis I could get horrible criticism some people can be really nasty there are plenty of trolls on the internet quite ready to shoot you down for my books or what I put on Twitter or I put on my blog and you just have to deal with it and you want to cry and you want to eat a whole pound of ice cream and I think that you should if what you wanted. It does go away. 24 hours later, you feel a lot better and you'd be ready to attack, but of course, you didn't do it. But I'm praise it. You want to feel good, it feels really nice that you hear something, but it's only one person's opinion. I get people say, oh, it was great, and then they say, oh, I did something else amazing, but I hate what they're talking about. It's just a matter of opinion, and you have to take everything with a grain of salt because you can't influence people. You can't change their minds, and they can't change yours, and you just have to suck it up, really. But it's not easy. 
No, I can imagine. Um, um, you have four sons. You you live in Auckland right now with your your husband and your four sons. So, are you able to pass on your experiences of uh, negative and positive in life to them, and or do you, do you just keep it well away from them? You know, like actors don't like their children to come into the profession. Would you encourage your children to become writers? Uh, my children right now, they see me sitting at my desk. They pull out their laptops and they make up little stories and they're copying me. I don't know if I want them to be writers. They have the whole world ahead of them. They're still quite young. Um, I don't really tell them what goes on too much, but they do like to ask and they like to make up my character names. So chances are if you've got a character, probably my nine-year-old has picked the name for you. He just loves it. They like to be involved, but it's my time. I'm a mother and a wife. I have a job, but writing is for me. I own that. Oh, that's really interesting that they, I guess, you know, um, we had that in, in our profession. We had hair and beauty salons back in the UK, and the children were very much copying us. Uh, the first time my child picked up her, a mirror, rather than holding it in front of her face, she held it to the back of her head, because that's what she'd seen us do to other people. <laughs> so it's interesting, of course, there's direct comparisons. Your children are going to copy what you're doing. Now, where you're living in, in Auckland now, but you are also a sale makeup. Is that correct? And and you were living in the city of cells. Tell me a little bit more about that side of your, your life and, and really how, how does the writing intertwine with that or does it? They don't really intertwine at all. I've got sort of two sides to my life that I, I can't stick together. I discovered sailing when quite late in terms of sailing when I was 13. But I came from the middle of the country, in dairy country. There was no sailing to be done. But I just, I watched it on television and I loved boats. And I can't really explain why or what it was, but my father really encouraged it. And I became a sailmaker when I was only 17. I actually quit school and got an apprenticeship as a sailmaker. And it's, it's been exactly how I wanted it to be. I've traveled the world. I've worked on boats everywhere. I can go out and sail the Great Barrier Reef or Hawaii or Spain or and it's given me this terrific opportunity to see the world with so many people from so many places. And I, I just love it. I can't even explain why I love sailing so much. It's, it's always my number one thing. Offshore sailing is my absolute favourite. So it's almost like the modern day equivalent of running away to the circus. You're becoming a sailmaker and travelling the world on a boat. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. Yeah. You know, a sailor would leave home at 14 a hundred years ago and I sort of took up the same thing and decided to go on yachts and but I mean it's been fantastic. I loved it every morning. Yeah, I have to say I've lived near the sea most of my life. I was born in North Devon, um, in South Devon, moved to North Devon. Um, we now live here, which isn't too far from the sea. Um, but I'm not a sailor. It didn't agree with me. It messes up your hair. How did you? <laughs> yes, there's no beauty in it, but it's great. You go to the yacht club. All the girls have just put their hair back and they've just got their wet weather gear on and their shoes and you go out. It doesn't matter how you look and everyone's the same and it's actually quite liberating. Actually, no, you are right. We, I, 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 I know that it doesn't suit me because I have tried it but that was one of the things that was quite incredible. It is a complete leveller. You can be out on this amazing boat or yacht and you um, then get off, you're on the jetty, you go into the port and you are mixing with people who are exactly the same. They're all dressed the same and they could be on the tiniest boat, the biggest boat, millionaires, no money in their pocket. It's, it is actually that sort of sea life is a real leveller, isn't it? Yeah, and it's terrific and you meet so many people and I've, you know, Go sailing with a billionaire. I'm just a regular person, and a billionaire takes you sailing. Or the King of Spain wants to give you a piece of chewing gum because he's at the yacht club. And you just think, oh my god, how did this happen to me? But yeah, it's it's just amazing. You meet the world's richest men, you meet regular people, and we all fit together because we have one common thing. So is 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 that true? Did the King of Spain <laughs> offer you some chewing gum? Yes, he is a chewing gum fan. He's been at the yacht club in Valencia when, when I was living there. And yeah, he likes to give it out to people who are standing with him. He's just like a regular guy. I know he's not overly popular, but as I say, in sailing, you just feel all the same. And that's what's really great about it. That's a very cool antidote. Uh, uh, antidote. <laughs> I didn't mean that. 
Anecdote. Anecdote, yes. <laughs> you knew what I meant. Sorry about that. So listen then, moving on. Um, cost to women, we are all about, you know, yeah. uh, we all work, we work differently in business to boys or we conduct ourselves differently and I think one of the, the good things uh, about, about having it is that you can speak uh, more clearly and openly, I think, to, to fellow women in business and or maybe not in business. But um, we are also, um, I think, we're better at setting objectives and targets and things like that. What are, are you like that? Or do you map out your whole year? Do you have something that you want to particularly achieve in 2014? I tend to leave it pretty fluid because we're sailing anything can pop up at a moment's notice and I've sort of developed a lifestyle where if my husband comes home and goes, we're going sailing, you go, okay, and a week later you're in Hawaii or whatever. So I like to just let things go because I never know what's coming. For 2014, my goal was to be the first year I released two novels. I haven't done that before and I put out Vengeance in the Valencian Water in January and I'll put out another Canada Medici in August. So at the moment I'm nose to the grindstone to get that complete. That's my goal, ultimately. Now, um, I got a message to say that you had offered to give out some Kindle e-reader copies of your books. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and which books it is um, that we're able to get our hands on as Costa Women uh, with regards to your your, late, is it your latest books? Yes, my, my, my Secrets of Spain is Blood in the Valencian Soil. And the new one is Vengeance in the Valencian Water. And if you like, I can send you out a Kindle or any kind of e-reader copy for all the cost of women members who would like to have a read. Just oh, that's really cool. So what we'll do then, um, we will put your details on the website underneath the video. Okay, which will be going on to YouTube for everybody to watch at a later date and how to get in contact with you. So that would be uh, through your website. Uh, I'm going to try and be adventurous again. Each time I have um, tried this so far on the Google Hangouts, it hasn't quite worked. But I'm going to attempt to flip over to your website. So here it is. It's carolineangusbaker.com and we can get in contact with you there I guess to find out how to get one of the e-readers, is that right? Yes, if you just click on the about section in the, uh, the top part of the screen uh, there's a form you can fill out just to leave your details and I'll be able to get back to you. It's all private so you can put your email address in there, no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really cool and I, I have to confess that I did have a little look um, at your blog uh, I was really intrigued with the one that you made on February the 14th, Writer Burnout and Disillusionment. <laughs> Do you know what? It was a refreshing change, though. It was it was really cool because it was and it was ironic because I, it was only the other day. Um, like you said, you know, everybody uh, tries to be optimistic. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I, I've been listening to some, um, you know thought leaders and trying to get myself a little bit G'd up for the beginning of the year like Brendan Bouchard and uh, Marie Forleo and following Brian Tracy. <laughs> I'm going full out for it. And then you think, gosh, no, I have to be cheerful all the time and positive. And I was thinking to myself, it would be really cool if you could just have a five minute moan and everybody just joined in <laughs> and said, I'm really not in a very good mood. And you sort of did that on that blog. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what I did. I find with when it's blogging, Facebook, people put posts and everything's wonderful. And I've written 600 books this year and they're all bestsellers. <laughs> oh, my children are all so brilliant and I'm going on another holiday. And you just think, life's not always like that. Writing's not always simple. Sometimes it really sucks. Sometimes. Yeah. I'm sick of it. Sometimes it's not as exciting as people think it is, and I just wanted to land and just let it out. And it's really hard work. Life can be hard work. End of. You know, and you do really have to apply yourself to it. Um, my the funniest bit I I want to that I liked, I'm just going to read out that was at the bottom of the, uh, of your blog where you put um, comments on this post are closed. Uh, the author uh, does. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just flicking screens then. The author does not need to hear that not everything on social media is true, that things will get better, or that she shouldn't take things personally. She knows all of these things to be true. That's, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's a fair comment. 
Yeah, people say, oh, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. I know it will be fine. I just wanted my moment just to let it all out there, just to say, hey, it's not all great, and if you feel like that too, terrific. <laughs> <laughs> well, I applaud you. I applaud you. I think it was... Um uh, very refreshing, and I encourage anybody to pop along to your website and have a look. I know I'm, I will uh, try my best here to keep following you. I don't want to sound like um, uh, that I will guarantee it, <laughs> because, uh, but I found it very, uh, very interesting to to read some of your concepts and, and and look at some of the reviews on your books as well. So I will follow with interest. Um, we're gonna be able to get all the details on how to contact you underneath the website and uh, all your other books that are coming up. So the second one that's coming out in August is another of the Kana Medici series, is that right? Yes, it's Luminous Colours of Dusk and it's out August 30. And it will be the third, maybe final, Kana book. It just depends. I don't even know if she'll survive at this stage. Oh, so you, you haven't actually finished it yet then? No, no I haven't finished. I'm close, but not quite. And I've always been tempted to kill off main characters. I love killing people. Terrible but true. Also, hopefully, can I make it through unscathed? But I'm not guaranteeing it yet. Do I do I detect a hint of catharsis <laughs> in there? Because you get to do it in the book, but you can't do it in real life. Yeah, the things I have googled for canon to try and understand. I'm surprised the police haven't knocked on my door. Yeah, how long? <laughs> I I had to Google how long can a severed hand still be warm before it starts to pulse and go stiff, and you think, what? I've looked up strangulation, stabbing, I've looked up a whole range of crazy things. And yeah, it's surprising that the police haven't come looking for me. <laughs> and especially uh, the world we live in at the moment where, you know, you, you are being watched and uh, Big Brother is watching you and things like that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, yes. I hope oh, we don't... This is what we do. <laughs> I, I hope um, we, we don't hear about you suddenly being detained at, um, I was going to say Her Majesty's Pleasure, but it's not quite the same in um, in New Zealand, is it? So. No, I still, I'm not a fan of prison, no. <laughs> no. Okay, well listen, I must let you go because I know you have your students arriving very shortly and uh, they will be... Um, Eager to see you, no doubt. So it's what is it? Quarter to ten there in the morning now. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can uh, I honestly say it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you to today. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. It's nearly time for me to go to bed, <laughs> and I'm sure um, that we'll have lots of questions and comments underneath the video, and we'll get them over to you. And it'd be lovely to speak to you um, again sometime soon when your other books are coming out. And um, thank you ever so much for giving up your time today to speak to me. Thank you for having me. It's been terrific. <laughs> Thank you. And um, like I said, all the details will be available below on the on the video. And uh, we look forward to possibly having you back over here in Spain sometime. Do you have plans for that? Uh, I am planning another trip back. I haven't got the date set, but I'm hoping sort of around September this year that I'll be back. Okay. Well, we will put that in our diaries, and we'll hold a, a, um, a session to to welcome you. And to, of course, your other your book will have been uh, out by then, won't it? As well. So we'll be. All right. Thanks a lot, Caroline. I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you.